Even with limited painting experience, I tried painting a city on an iceberg with watercolor. The city is called Everheim and is from the map of Fruder, a map that took over two weeks to draw. Now, I've actually tried drawing Everheim by pencil a while ago, but the icebergs ended up looking like rocks and I wasn't satisfied with it, so I decided to paint it instead. If you haven't already, you should go check out the original video after you're done watching this one for more of the lore, but I will give some of it to you now. No one knows how Everheim came to be, except one man. He was the descendant of the builders, and the extraordinary tale of Everheim has been carefully curated and passed down from generation to generation, and it goes like this. Many tribes had inhabited and dominated the fourth peninsula of Further. The land was almost entirely gobbled up by six different tribes, each of them similar in size, except one. The tribe was called the Ephi, and it was made up of barely three families. The Ephi inhabited the southern forest of the peninsula, but were eventually forced out by the domineering tribes, herded like animals over the peninsula and up into the foothills of the western mountain range. A decade after the Ephi left their native homeland, the largest of the tribes, the Nyosh, made their final attempt to wipe out the tiny tribe. They marched on the foothills, forcing the Ephi deep into the mountains. The Nyosh were skilled in navigating the mountains, and pursued their weak adversaries to the great ocean. It was winter, and the ice was frozen over. Having nowhere to run, the Ephi skidded out onto the ice, looking back at their satisfied pursuers were beginning to set up camp on the coast. If you want the epic map of Hruther, which was made from the help of your comments, check out the first link in the description before Hruther leaves my shop for good. The FI lived off the ice. They became hunters, feasting off the fat walruses that popped up from the ice and their hunger for revenge against the tribes that had hunted them to near extinction. After generations, their fiercest leader, Fostbold Ironhand, arose to the reins with revenge on his mind. It was seven days after Fostbold took the mantle of chief of the tribe when he began organizing the slim warriors of the Ephi for battle. As a child, he had dreamed of seeing the homeland he had barely seen, and could barely remember. He dreamed of one day retaking it. No one had dared make a move over the watchful Nyosh who haunted the coast in years. That was the thought on all the warriors' minds as they trudged over the ice from their hiding on the tiny island that had been their home during the summers. Fostbold waited for midnight, then attacked the unsuspecting Nyosh. It was pure chaos as the Nyosh warriors fled for the mountains, but Fostbold did not follow. His warriors plundered the camp, then hid in the hills, waiting for a party of fresh enemies to come and inspect the camp. When they finally did, the Fi once again attacked, overpowering the small force. Over the next month, Fostbold and his men ravaged the hill and mountain settlements of the Nyosh. The Fi grew in size and power under Fostbold Iron Hand, planting themselves as the leading power of the Western Range. Years of war passed, and a new leader arose in the Nyosh. He was called Drabi the Peacemaker. The young leader sent emissaries to the war-hungry Fosbold, asking for a meeting with the now gray-haired man. Fosbold agreed. The day of the meeting came, and Fosbold showed up on top of Mount Gracious with his entire army and arsenal, intending to scare the young prince of the Nyosh. Yet the young man came out of his tent unfazed and ready to meet the fierce man called Iron Hand. Hours of talk and bargaining passed, then finally, the two men stood and shook hands. There was no longer war in the Western Range. Fostbold agreed to end the destruction of the Nyosh settlements in exchange for a portion of the ancient homelands of the Ephi in the forest and mountains in the south. Soon, the whole of the Ephi tribe had relocated to their new home. Many were overjoyed to be back where they belonged, but for many, including Fosbold, the thought of the great frozen ocean still had a place in their hearts. 
it was not long till homesickness fully set in. Many of the Ephi grew restless, and finally decided to leave the rest of the tribe behind. Leaving the remainder of the Ephi under the leadership of Igor, Fosbold's younger brother, Fosbold and the Icers, as the rest of the Ephi called them, set off for their small island in the frozen ocean. The journey was once again difficult, meeting many of the Nyash they had ravaged just months earlier. Only when they saw the vast expanse of ice in front of them did the Icers feel like they were almost home. Only, the Ephi couldn't find their island oasis. It was gone, and it was almost summer, which meant the ice would melt soon. Fosbold was old and slow, and many of the Ephi exhausted from the trek over the ice, so very few of them would be able to even make it back to land in time for the great melt. Then one day, a stranger showed up. The Ephi welcomed him with open arms, following their old custom to give sojourners part of their meals. In turn, the stranger offered his advice after hearing of their conundrum one evening. I know a little magic, he said. I could make some of the ice here unmelting. The Ephi glared at him as if it was a rude joke. Prove it, said Fosbold, chucking a chunk of ice at the man. The man nodded and dropped the ice into the fire, then reached in himself with a stick and kicked the ice out. It was solid, unmelted. Fosbold and the Ephi were careful to pick out the perfect locations for their new settlement. They picked out a dozen large mounds of ice and had their new friend make them unmelting. Summer came, and with it, the test of the magic ice. It didn't melt even to the end of summer as the ices once again began to freeze. Postbold and the Ephi were overjoyed with their new home, and welcomed Pyotr Iron Ice into their small settlement. Over the centuries, leaders came and went, buildings rose and fell, but the ice stayed the same with the exception of a few additions of new bergs. Not many know the tale of Fostbold Iron Hand, the Ephi, and Pyotr Iron Ice, but now you do. Hold these secrets forever, and pass them to your offspring. May the ice under your feet be unmelting. Until next time.